And welcome back, everybody. Nice halftime feature. And it, it's interesting. It's 22 to 7 in favor of uh, Benedictine, in favor of uh, Glen Academy over Benedictine, we should say. I'm Bill Edwards along with Ty Reykjavik getting ready for the start of the second half. And, Ty, it's been interesting. Uh, the kids did a great job putting that halftime show together. But if there was ever a halftime show, they should have stayed exactly. more. Exactly. I mean, the, uh, the Glen Academy band was just outstanding. They did, um, let's see, they did Celebrate by Cool and the Gang. And they did uh, Georgia. Um, George by Gladys famous, Knight. Gladys Knight, I believe. Yeah. Yes, yes, and the um, and the and the Pips. <laughs> uh, but famous, of course. Yeah, Ray Charles. That was actually written by a fine gentleman um, who was not from Georgia at all. A fellow named Hoagie Carmichael. Well, I tell you what, Indiana. The two best bands uh, year in and year out that we've been able to see is uh, is like you say, Glenn, and and when we played there, and then in the playoffs, Lowndes County has done an excellent job with their uh, band, and give give uh, those people credit for what they've done. They work hard and they come out here to perform and then I believe they were really extremely entertaining to the uh, Benedictine crowd. Well, Ty, it's going to be um, uphill battle for uh, Benedictine. They certainly have their work cut out for them because Glenn won the toss and they elected to receive. And um, so they're going to be receiving the opening kickoff. So they have uh, the momentum going into halftime and uh, now they have um, now they get the football back as John Porzio gets ready to kick it away. Well, the last thing they want to do is allow Glenn to come out in this second half and set the tone with some sort of score. Uh, and they want to stop him here and, and set the tone. I was talking with the BC coaches at halftime. They said this is not the uh, well interesting yeah. situation right there. What they tried to do was uh, actually try a little onside kick, try to kick a line drive over here and give uh, I believe that was either uh, Cody Thomas or somebody a chance to run underneath it, but he kicked it a little bit too hard. And so what they've actually done is they're going to give Glenn an opportunity to get a good field position here to start the second half. Glenn will take the ball at the point where it went out of bounds, which will be right around the 46-yard line. BC trying to make something happen immediately, going with the onside kick. It was a good call. What they had seen was that this lineman over here on this side for Glenn takes off a little quick there and is not holding his position. So they came over here, but Porgio kicked it a little bit too hard and didn't give his people an opportunity to get to the ball. So Glenn is going to take it over with great field position with the third quarter about to get started. As Franco Johnson brings up his squad. He's got those wide outs, three of them. Well, split wide to the left. And the give is going to go straight ahead to Brian Wise. And Wise spins off a couple of tackles. And doesn't look like he got much, but he got two. So it'll be second down and about eight. Grover Collins was the first uh, defensive lineman for BC. Made good penetration in the backfield. And actually hit him right at the line of scrimmage. But he was able to fall forward for the game. So second down and eight. Give is going to go once again to Wise. Wise bouncing off some folks, but trying to run laterally. He can't find the hole, and he gets knocked down. Bill, one of the things that talking with Coach Walsh at halftime, the longtime head coach for uh, Glenn, he said that in all the games that he's watched Glenn so far this year, that is the best half of execution that they have ever done the whole season long on offense. They've seen every game so far, and they have not done anything like what they performed anything like that. So playing against Benedictine brought out the best in Glenn Academy in that first half. Well, that sometimes will do it. And back to pass is Johnson. Johnson fires it out, and it's going to be overthrown. It was intended out there for Blake Ferguson, and that play worked like a charm in the first half and picked up about 40, 45 yards. But uh, that one goes incomplete, and it brings up fourth down and eight. So just like that, they're going to have to punt it away. Well, Patrick Moore, the uh, actually defensive end for Glenn, uh, excuse me, for BC, had moved out here to cover that inside receiver. And when he tried to loop outside, uh, he got in between him and caused that ball to be thrown very high. So again, like you said, the uh, onside kick attempt does not backfire. They will lose a little bit in field position, but did a good job in their first series of defending against Glenn. So Glenn is about to punt it away here. This is only their second punt of the night, and they get a little bit of a fumble on the kick, and uh, BC guys almost had a chance to block it, well, ran into the kicker, but they... Um, well, they're saying that Cody Thomas actually got a piece of it. The first thing I watched Alto Fudge yeah. do was give a remark and he gave the tip of his fingers mark yeah. saying that Cody Thomas had gotten a little bit of it which means it was okay to run into the kicker so uh, 
Uh, but the bad part is he should have, but I don't know how it went by him. Ain't that the truth? 22 to 7 is the score. BC trailing by 15. And Andrew, or rather uh, Matthew Dotson, handing it off. Well, we didn't want to say too much of right here at halftime. We did, we did find out that it looks like Lamar Owen, the quarterback, fine, fine quarterback for BC, will not play in the second half. He has a pinched nerve in his left shoulder from a hit he took earlier. It's his non-throwing, but uh, his left shoulder, they may be trying to ice him down. He may see him later, but it does not look like he's going to play in the second half, so they're going to have to turn it over to Matthew Dodson, who has gotten a lot of quality playing time so far this year. Yeah, so the sophomore, ha and he's done a great job while he's been in there. But he's not the passer that Lamar is. Uh, no, indeed. So Dotson brings him up. Ziegler goes in motion. Pitch back goes to Ziegler. Ziegler trying to find something on the corner and has nothing. Is going to lose about a yard or two. And it's going to bring up third down and about 13 or 14. Unfortunately for BC, all that offense that they had in the first, I do see uh, uh, in the for all everything they were trying to do, able to do there in, the again. in the passing yards is going to change a little bit. They've got to become a little bit more of a run oriented team, try to chip away at this lead on the ground. I'm looking to see if Lamar's even on, even on the sideline. I don't see him. He may be over in the locker room trying to get ice down. They may be trying to work on that shoulder, see if they can loosen it up for him. Okay, we won't have a chance to look at that play again, but Dotson brings him up. Dotson, a well-known name in athletics in this town, as Randy Gill goes in motion left. Dotson back to pass, looking for somebody. Eludes tacklers right and left. He may have to just take off, which he does and is gonna lose some more yardage as he goes out of bounds at around the 23 yard line. So he loses about two or three more yards on the play trying to find somebody to pass to and it's fourth down and about 18. Dotson rolled out right there but had to put it down. I do see Lamar on the sideline and they are tending to that shoulder. Uh, might be able to get a shot of him right there. They're putting, he is not gonna come back in. They're putting him into a sling on the sideline on his left shoulder which is non throwing side which is good but unfortunately that means that they're going to play the rest of this game without their uh, biggest offensive threat. So John Porzio in to kick it away standing just ahead of his 10 yard line and gets that one up high kick not very long but really high and taken there by Blake Ferguson who gets back on his feet and finally gets smeared by Travis West but not before he picks up some nice yardage, and there's a BC player down on the play. That's number 15, Cody Thomas, and they can't afford to lose him. Now, Cody's one of the leading tacklers on defense and does a great job on uh, on, on uh, special teams of getting down the field. There you see Cody on up on all fours right now. So play will be suspended. We're just underway in the third quarter, 8.49 to go, and uh, 22 to 7 is the score. Well, just when you think things are really going for BC, they were able to stop them there. And then and then we find out that what we thought there at halftime. All right, while we're waiting on the injury here to see what's going on, let's take a pause for this with a score 22 to 7 and 849 to play. The bicycling. Back to live action, just had a little pitch out that didn't get very much out to uh, John Moody. We give BC a lot of credit right there. They ran the sweep to the wide side of the field, and those guys did a good job of stringing it out, stringing it out. It looked like Moody was finally going to get a chance to turn the corner, but I think that was uh, uh, Stephen Doan finally came up, running him out of bounds for only a two-yard gain. Yeah, he ran out of room. Second down and eight. Johnson dropping to pass again. A little screen, gonna be go to Moody. Moody's gonna be get loose. He puts those moves on and going right and left and just dances away from defenders and goes all the way down to about the 28 yard line before he finally gets knocked out of bounds. Pick up of about 15 on the play. That little freeze move he makes where he stutter stepped and gave a hard step to his right. Really stuck, made Cody Thomas and Stephen Doan, I think, uh, uh, Brian McBride just stopping their tracks and, and then Moody turning it on there was able to pick up yardage right there. This is a very fragile time for BC right here. They give up a touchdown. It'll be tough for BC to come back without the uh, services of Lamar. 
Give is going to go to Brian Wise. Wise breaking tackles and finally gets hauled down after about a three yard gain. It's going to be second and seven. We'll give Taylor Rock and several others up front right there for uh, for BC Travis West. You see getting up off the yeah. tackle for for what looked like a very little game. But again, as you still look up, see where the marker is. He picked up a good a good full three yards. Yeah, maybe even four. Glenn looking for a nail right here to put in the coffin if they can get a score here. It would be awfully tough for BC to come back, especially without their star quarterback, as the give is going to go to Wise. Wise dancing through another hole again, and he picks up some big yardage all the way down to about the 12. Just a little straight handoff right there. They found a hole and was able to scoot up there, like you said, for a 12-yard gain, an easy first down. Puts them down, uh, what was that, on the 12-yard line mm -hmm. where they can, they can still pick up another first down without getting a touchdown. Yep. Clock rolling is 7.35 to go, third period, 22 to 7 in favor of Glenn already. Handoff once again to Wise. Wise dancing through that same hole again. Unbelievable. He goes down to about the five. Well, BC's in a four man front, which they have somebody over that left guard, and he's taking on the, the guard right there. But what Wise is doing, he's taking a little half a step, stutter step to his left, and running between the guard and the tackle where there's nobody at. And he's able to get upfield. With well, these three receivers out there, it's only leaving Matt Tuttle in the in the middle back there by himself. He's having a hard time covering all the field. Wise is going to get it and going to get clobbered immediately. Well, Matt Tuttle came on a middle stunt right there. Came sure did. came through clean and was able to get him just to hand it off. If they could, they need to hold him to a field goal to, to, to continue to keep this within a, a, a reasonable lead to kind of overcome. Third and three from the 11. Matthew Tuttle trying to give his players, fellow players, a little encouragement there. Is Johnson going to give it to Brian Wise again? Wise is going to bulldoze his way right to the end zone for the touchdown. Well, I'll tell you what, he just got in behind the, that big offensive line. A couple of those guys, Lucius Knight, several other uh, guys for Glen Academy, just pushed his way right pushed into the uh, into the end zone. Pushed his way straight in. So with 6-13 to play in the third period, it's 28-7. to Red Terrors. And uh, Joey Bullen bulls it through. Let's make it 29. So Benedictine finds themselves down 22 points with 6-13 to play in the third period. And well, the only thing that makes Glen Academy happier than winning is knowing that Brunswick is losing. We got a report uh, there that uh, Wayne County is, uh, this is everybody's year to pay back Brunswick yeah. for uh, what they've done the last <laughs> couple of years. They have uh, not called off the dogs and, and they've really- Boy, uh, they are getting hammered. They've isolated themselves this year because- uh, It's come home to roost. Uh, right now, I think the halftime score was uh, Wayne County 42 to seven, and that was at halftime. So uh, Brunswick enjoyed those uh, two years of uh -huh. uh, success. And I'll tell you what, uh, you reap what you sow, and uh, a couple of those games, maybe they should have uh, called, called off the dogs a little bit in return this I, year. Um, I just don't understand that when you're way ahead of... Uh, well, it proves nothing. Has to win. There's no BCS and all that stuff where you need to win and things. It, w is a W. One or 100 points, it doesn't matter. It only counts for one in the win column. Yeah, that's right. And Bullen really drills this one down. Ziegler's going to take it right at the goal line. He's up to the 10, reverses his field, trying to get away, and he gets a, finally gets away from a couple of guys, but can't. Everything else finally caught up with him. Everybody else caught up with him, and he goes down at about the 14-yard line. Just a great kick by Joey Bullen, and this kid's a sophomore. Yeah, well, Tony Floyd was the uh, cornerback. He was about the eighth person to hit. Uh, Ziegler, if he could have stood up for a couple more hits, he could have made it through because the other eight people had already hit him and not wrapped up. Ziegler did a good job of staying up, trying to get some yardage 
but probably should have let that kick go in the end zone. He cut it on the one, only got it out to the 13. So let's see what if uh, Matt Dodson can put something together for BC on this drive. Well, they got a long way to go and a short time to get there, as uh, old Jerry Reed once said. The handoff is going to go to Travis West. West trying to get outside. He gets some nice yardage up to about the 20-yard line, about five yards on the play, second down and five. Tony Floyd on the tackle for uh, Glenn Academy. A little misdirection, counter play. He was able to get up and get good yardage, second and five, put it into a good situation. That's what, uh, what BC needs to do. I thought they ran him out of bounds, but the clock continues to run. Yeah, I thought he got out of bounds too, but clock is rolling, 534, third period, 29 to seven, Red Terrors. Second down, a long five for the Cadets. Dotson picks up the low snap, fires across the middle. He hits Great catch. Kenny O'Neill, who gets smeared as soon as he catches it. I mean, he was killed. Man, but it was hangs onto him. the football. Once again, he made it. He made a spectacular catch earlier, Ty. And this, sure this kid's a gamer. Well, I tell you what, the one thing that it says in the uh, in the uh, Benedictine Press guide about him is that he should be one of the finer receivers to come out of BC before it is through. And he's just a freshman. And I would have to say that that prognostication might be an understatement. He's already made some big catches just as a freshman. He continues to get better and better. Um, First he's going to have some opportunities as he, as he moves on down the line. First down for the cadets mm -hmm. and uh, not a bad play by Mr. Dotson either. No, not at all either. We maybe not give him enough credit right there for getting the ball up, staying in the pocket. And throws this one sort of uh -oh. up for grabs. And it was a jump ball. And uh, Nardis Walker, or rather, um, uh, Travis Drayton was the one who had the, the biggest shot at it, and he played for the bad guys. Yeah. He just went up and sort of knocked it down. I don't know why they weren't going for the interception on that time. Well, him and Jarmaine Johnson, they don't share very well because both of them were fighting yeah. for the ball. Sure were. And they uh, ran into each other and knocked it down. Uh, uh, Dodson was going for Kenny O'Neill on the streak down the sideline and kind of got the ball hung up in this breeze from our left and uh, didn't quite get enough mustard on it there. But the one thing you like right there, unlike some of the ones that Lamar throws, he gave the ball a little bit of air and had a chance to come up and over right there. He just put maybe a little too much here. Somewhere between uh, where Lamar throws and that one's a pretty good pass. Second down and 10, Dotson from the shotgun, back to the 20, trying to avoid some tacklers, and fires it complete. Good job. To Randy Gill down the sidelines for another first down at a 39-yard line with 4.39 to go, and that out of bounds there not, and it stops the clock. Well, the one thing I think you were saying about the Dotson name and family, especially in B.C., thinking back over uh, his brother, I believe, who was quarterback a few years ago before the McNamara's and all at B.C., if I yep. remember correctly. He was a very tenacious little quarterback and did a good job of just what you see him doing right there, kind of picking and choosing and scrambling his way and finding somewhere to get open and, and finding somebody down the field. And he did a good job right there. He doesn't possess the speed that Lamar does, but sometimes uh, your head can uh, overcome some things maybe your feet can't do. Well, I tell you, I've got some um, traditional names on this team. Name of Sowers as well in this town is pretty yeah. well known. As Matthew throws it back across the middle, get, hits Gill again for about a five-yard gain, once more up to the 45-yard line. Well, the one thing that Matt, uh, Dawson uh, gives you that Lamar, he's not going to get the happy feet and get upfield, so you're going to have to get back there and get to him. He's going to find somebody down the field to throw it to, even though he doesn't have quite the strength in the arm that Lamar does. He does, like I said, he's finding some open receivers, picked up five yards on there. may not seem like it's a lot, but I'll tell you what, uh, you know, starting to set a little bit of tone here and you're starting to feel some things. Uh, you know, they're starting to gain a little bit of confidence moving down the field. So it's second down, long five, ball just shy of the 45-yard line, B.C. zone. Dotson still in that shotgun formation. Looking to pass once again, eluding tacklers, firing up field, and it's complete. What a nice that job. Ziegler? No, it's uh, that's Andrew Sowers. Complete the Sowers for the first down. What a great job of scrambling by the young sophomore. Well, I tell you what, there's just wow. no, there's no. Wish we had a replay, folks, because you need to see that again. He got in and out of trouble very easily, maintained his composure, and was able to find Andrew Sowers down the field was probably the most uh, impressive part about that. Getting away from all those people is one thing, but then yeah. finding somebody down the field, 12 yards down the field for the first down makes it even better. And a nice catch by Mr. Sowers. Uh, we've got a work stoppage here on the field. I think uh, BC's going to call timeout. Why? Well, I... 
Uh, so. All right. Well, with that timeout, we'll take time out for this. Scores 29 to 7 in favor of the Red Terrors. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Three and a half minutes to go in the third period. BC is behind by 22, 29 to 7. But the cadets are on the move here. You see uh, Glenn Academy standing there. Well, Bill, going back to the timeout, I saw uh, uh, Dodson coming over to the sideline, talk, getting to play from bracket, and there was a little bit of confusion on people going in and the personnel. So rather than risk a poor play, uh, they called a timeout to, to come over to the sideline, talk about it, and kind of regroup to go back out and get something positive here to happen. Wise decision. Dotson rolling right and fires complete to O'Neill again. And all of a sudden, uh, Mr. Dotson is getting a lot more protection. Some good blocking by that line that had been letting some people through earlier. And they are. And again, one of the things that Matthew doesn't have in his hip pocket is that is maybe that breakaway speed so instead of looking maybe to keep it run up the field he's you know he's getting the ball down the field to his receivers which uh, right now they're responding another first down for the cadets good job by Kenny O'Neill running a good out route right there got the made a, the sure catch and picked up 11 yards ball resting on the hash mark in the near side of the field on the 37 of the Red Terrors they're gonna come after him here and he's gonna get sacked this time Bursting through number 24, Danny Provenzolo. There you go. Provenzano. Well, right there, they sold the house and brought them all. There was nobody in the middle of the field, no free safety or anybody. If uh, if Dotson could have just laid the ball up there, Randy Gill was running down the middle of the field. Uh, they, they took the free safety. They brought everybody right there to try to stop them on first down and put them in a bad field position, kind of break some of uh, Dotson's uh, momentum that he had. Big loss, nine-yard loss on the play. It's second down and 19. Ball back on the 47-yard line with a pitch back to Gill, and Gill's not going to get anywhere as flags go down. Gill's going to well, lose a yard or two. Flags down the other side of the field. That's going to be an illegal uh, illegal formation on, or illegal, on uh, illegal procedure on Benedictine. They only had uh, uh, six men on the line of scrimmage. They only had 10 guys on the field. Brady Cannon came off the field and probably should have stayed out there. So they only gave him six people on the line of scrimmage. Glenn will decline the penalty, which will, uh, of course, move it to third down. So now it'll be third and 19 with the penalty being declined. If you're a BC fan, you might have been hoping they didn't uh, pick that up, but uh, yeah. Sonny DePhillips, the uh, line judge on the other side, uh, very alertly saw the uh, illegal formation by BC and called a penalty. Dotson, the pitch back to Ziegler. Ziegler fires it down the field to O'Neill. O'Neill's got it down to the 10. Hold the on five. To him. There you go. First and goal for the cadets on a great halfback option pass. Ziegler just laid it right out in his hands. Let's take another look at it. What a gorgeous play. Well, they, Ziegler firing it down to Kenny O'Neill. Well, give Glenn credit. They actually had it covered. Two guys back there were covering it, but because the ball had a little bit of touch on it, it came up over. And there you see the pitch back to Ziegler. He's left-handed, so they're going to throw it going to his left. He'll lay the ball up. And Kenny O'Neill is really showing his stuff as a freshman, only as a freshman right there. All right, let's come back to live action. <laughs> Right there, you see Kenny catch the ball, does a good job, needs to tuck it away right here before he gets in there. Yeah, nice, nice play. And um, BC ran one play there, gets down to about the uh, two-yard line where it's going to be second down and goal from the two. If BC's had one one major problem tonight, it has been in the running game. They haven't been able to get something going to get into the end zone, any kind of a... Uh, Whatever they can hang their head on. This is really where you need Lamar to be able to put some pressure on the corner right there and get in. If they get in, be, I wouldn't be surprised to see him have a pass play called right here, maybe a dive and dump it over to Kenny O'Neill. Dying seconds of the second half. Run, and, run, and, run. And, and, uh, oh, and Matthew Brady. Dotson wide open on the naked bootleg. And in he goes for the score. 
Travis Simpson, the junior defensive end for Glenn, had a chance to uh, look like he was going to close in on him, but Dotson showed some good speed. Sure did. Hit that corner, and there was nobody there. I think they were thinking maybe the dive or something like that, Ty. And it's now 29 to 13 with 22 seconds to play in the third period. An impressive, impressive drive. Well, BC's going to go ahead and try to go for two here to get it back to a 14 point game. Um, might be a little odd right here to go for it. Go ahead and kick it right here and keep yeah, it at 15. But if it works, then uh, look for the slant here to Kenny O'Neill. They got him out here wide. They're going to try to attract everybody to the other side. Ziegler get it to him quick. And fires it into the end zone. He's got it. Good job. In there to Andrew Sowers, was it? Uh, I believe. No, 43. That is uh, Brian Brady Cannon. Brady Cannon for the two points. And it's 29 to 15. And this crowd is finally has something to cheer about again. Well, they sure do. I tell you what, they're going to get fired up right here and, and see they've got it to a 14 point game. So. Uh, you know, it gets them in a situation where now they can get back into it again. Uh, the the little rule book that you go by for going for one and two may not have said go for uh, two right there, uh, but Coach uh, Brackett went against it and uh, was able to get it in there. Now making a 14 point game. So with 22 seconds to play in the third period, it's 29 to 15. And I was looking right there. That's Brady Cannon's third catch on the on the season. I didn't remember him catching a whole lot of them right there, but on the season, that's only his third catch and couldn't have come in a better time right there. Now puts BC within uh, two scores. So uh, Glenn was a little inept on offense that last series, so we'll see if they're able to uh, to come back a little bit. BC's got a hurry or they're going to get called for a delay of game. They've already blown the play clock in. BC's got to line up and kick it. Matthew Dotson. Doing a great job at quarterback. Glenn is actually expecting an onside kick right here. So teeing it up, John Porzio. Hurry up, John. Everybody up. And, they, and they're doing they it. They are going to do it. And he kicks it right to number one, Marcus Norman, who does not play for BC. No. So it's going to be so. Well, I'm, BC I'm not talking. sure I'd have done that. Oh, well, it's it's a little early right you're there. Give, you're giving you're giving Glenn, you know, great field position. They got less than half the field to go. They've been moving the ball well. You put a lot of pressure on your defense here. Well, they, BC defense has played pretty well so far. Well, they in, had in indeed, the second but, half, and uh, and we're gonna see. But it looks but, like uh, uh, Glenn's gonna get into more of a run formation. We're gonna, we're gonna see a little bit of John Moody here on this series. In the eye, and there's Moody, and Moody gets smeared by, shy of the line of scrimmage. May have lost a half a yard or so. Sure did. Great job right there by several cadets. I think Roosevelt Pugh uh, coming through from his linebacker position, getting in there and getting in the backfield before. And the ever-present Mr. Tuttle. Well, Matt Tuttle and uh, Cody Thomas are, are two very good. I mean, I'm not sure. I haven't seen. Uh, now Cody's over here on the sideline. He hurt himself on that uh, punt. Yeah. Well, we're going to go to the fourth quarter here with, a, the, with the ball game. That's the final play of the third period. We have 12 minutes to go, and it's 29 to 15 in favor of Glenn. There you see Donald Chumley. Had a great career. Played well here in high school at Groves. Yes, he did. And then went off to uh, Georgia. Well. But nobody's perfect, right? Nobody's now. perfect. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> but the, uh, I tell you, looking down the sideline, you see uh, Lamar Owens in his uh, letter jacket. You see Cody Thomas sitting very sadly on the sideline. Those are two guys right there that, that uh, BC cannot afford to be without. Boy. But to BC's credit, it always seems to be something like that that they rally behind. They lose Lamar Owens. Matt Dodson comes in. He's running a offense pretty well. They lose Cody Thomas, and now the defense is really stepping up and playing well. So sometimes it's not despite them, but it's uh, uh, you know in spite of them. Doing well, even though they've lost some of their key players. 
So Franco Johnson brings him up. Give is going to go straight ahead to Brian Wise. Wise gets a couple. Well, Glenn very smartly went back to their, their spread formation with three receivers, but again, when you're nursing a 14-point lead, they've just decided to try to keep it on the ground. Third down and about eight. Ball at the BC, 48. This is probably some of what Coach Walsh was talking about. They, they're not executing their offense as well as they did in the first half. Look for Franco to pass here. And indeed he does. Oh, man. Almost caught by Tuttle, throws it away, and they could get an intentional grounding out of that, but there was a player in the vicinity. And there the, was. The BC fans want, in, want uh, intentional grounding, but they're not going to get it. I got news for you. If you're a BC fan, you're hoping for a little higher pass because <laughs> whoever yeah. was over there for BC, I think that was, uh, I, I didn't see who it was. Whoever was over there for BC was in front of the receiver. So if that ball had yeah. been thrown a little higher, we might have had six points the other way. So if you were going to boo anything, you boo him for throwing it short. <laughs> Johnson, <laughs> Johnson managed to keep his feet. Matt Tuttle was in on him like the old white on rice, as they say. And so I'm getting ready to punt it away. As Glenn fumbles it, and it's blocked. BC going after the ball, chasing it down. Kick it in the end zone. In the there end you zone. go. Near the end zone. BC falls on it. Holy it cow. Like 72 Grover Collins may have gotten it, and the BC crowd is on their feet with 11.02 to go in the ball game. They could close the gap to seven here in short order. Well, I tell you what, Grover Collins. Somebody get a watch on him because he covered that 30 <laughs> yards as, about as quickly as you possibly could. He's going out for cross country. He had his he had his <laughs> mind made on a touchdown. He saw his name in the Morris Savannah Morning News. He was friend right there. BC has had a knack. I tell you what, though, Glenn helped him with a bad snap. Yep. And then the, on top of that, the punter did not come up with it very cleanly. Touchdown here makes this a very interesting last four, uh, fourth quarter. Matthew Dodson. Heck of a little league baseball player. Gives it off to Travis West. Touchdown. Right. West hit.
my gosh. I thought it was just uh, maybe a flag. Or Brian something. McBride somehow came up with the ball. Folks, we need a replay on oh this. Oh, my word. There was a big pileup, and evidently the ball squirted out from the side. I didn't see it. And of course, we don't have a camera on that side. You well, won't be able to get much of it. It pours, yeah. We, exactly. As good, as good as this is, we don't have the reverse angle camera this week. <laughs> but we're working on it for next week, folks. Fred, we got to work on one on the other side there to give us that angle. 29, 29, 707 to go. <laughs> Send oh. your donations to the Savannah <laughs> Art Academy to buy a camera for the other side. They're only side. about $10,000, folks. They take a check. Dotson giving it off to West. West breaks two or three tackles. He's going to get Hold a yard on the ball. or two. He's, He's going to. My word, what a determined run. He well, didn't get very much, but he sure was impressive. Well, when the mow's on your side, it gets into everybody. Travis West has got the mow in his chest. He feels it tighten up. He got a chance to get it. Now, what BC's trying to do is, is you that know, just... That was the toughest two yards of the night. Yeah, work it down a little bit. Uh, the field goal situation's a little tough because Porzio's normal holder is Lamar Owen. You're going to want to see this one again, and we're going to be back. Uh, we'll, we'll have the replay well, for you tomorrow at three. This might be the most rewatched, re most watched replay in Savannah. Tomorrow at three, and then Wednesday afternoon at three. They're coming after him right here. Nobody's Set your in VCR. Throw it up. Dotson trying to get away. He won't. And he's going to knock he him way out of field. Field goal range. There's nothing he could do there. Well, he shouldn't have been in that position. You can see that one coming, so it's going to be second down and good heavens, a mile and a half. Well, BC's going to call timeout after that play. Glen Academy, like they had done several plays before, they sold the farm, brought them all. Dotson, and I'm sure that's what if you look, if you show Coach Brackett right down there in that huddle, what you're going to see is he was looking at Dotson, saying you got to get rid of it, throw it up right there, and give yeah. him a chance to run under it like you've been doing. He didn't do it, and uh, took the. Uh, Ooh, what is that? Because he gained three, so we How much would have been intentional? 15. It couldn't have been too much more than intentional grounding. Just get rid of the darn thing. Well, that's at the point of the foul, so at that point right there, it might have been. That was an 18-yard loss. But I guess the one thing we've come to expect here in the last quarter and a half is don't count them out. Boy, isn't that the truth? Uh, 6.04 to go. It's 29 to 29. The worst part about that that does, like I said, is it puts them into a situation where a field goal it is not really within the realm of the possibility. They need to get uh, pretty much uh, 20 yards, 25 yards to have a chance for a field goal on fourth down. Of course, 25 would give them a first down, but I guess around 20 to have another chance for a field goal. Let's see if they're going to sell the farm. Now, they're going to stay back on defense, play a, a, just a two-deep zone, a little bit. Of Third down and 23. No, Travis. they're bringing them again. Travis West in the back. Dotson fires it right over the middle. It's complete. Ziegler gets it. They pick up about, oh, seven or eight yards on the play, but they needed a lot more than that, so that's going to bring up fourth down and about uh, 20. Well, Coach Brackett right now is showing something. He's got a lot of confidence in his defense. He's not going to punt it, play for overtime. He's going to go for it right now, even though it is fourth and 18. Yeah. But Dotson got it away right there. The little little sure pep did. go for it right now, even though it is fourth and 18. Yeah. But Dotson got it away right there. The little little sure pep. Sure did. Well, they're gonna call timeout. I'm not so sure a pooch kick wouldn't be the best thing right here. Let let um, Dotson. Well, I'm, uh, yeah, that's, that's right. Let Glenn make the mistakes. 5.28 to go. BC trying to drive again. It's 29-29. We'll be right back. Twenty-nine, five twenty-eight to go. And BC is fourth and 18. Well, that, what they did is they reconsidered. going to go for it. Now, they reconsidered right there. I think you're going to see Dotson with a, a punt right here, and that's the smart move. Back, back, Glenn, back Glenn up right here. I tell yep. you what, needs to angle for that left sideline. Try to get the ball out on about the 10-yard uh, line and back Glenn up. Their offense has not shown any kind of ability to uh, to move it here in this second half. So uh, back them up and then give your, uh, your team a chance right there on defense. Blake Ferguson and Travis Drayton are deep. 
That little pooch kick you were talking about, angling for the sidelines and out of bounds. They probably wanted it to go a little deeper. Yeah. Well, and there was no return. Yeah, you're right. You'd have liked to have ten, about six or seven more yards on it. But uh, again, now that your defense, which has played so well, the pressure's on them to stop them. So the Red Terrors will put it in play. Yeah, what I haven't heard quite as much out of this BC radio crew, I mean, excuse me, this Glenn radio crew behind us. Uh, I, I think they're as much in shock as oh, the uh, Glenn offense is. I don't doubt it. I mean, this game was just well in hand. There's no way you could have predicted the uh, offense to go in up like this. And the give is going to go straight ahead Ooh. to Mr. Wise, and Wise breaks through and gets first down yardage up to near the 30-yard line and breaks out of the pack. Now that's what he did early in that first quarter that he hadn't done any here in the second half. Yeah, that's his best run of the second half by far. He'd only been getting like two that or three yards. That might be the first rushing yard because I don't think they've got much more than that with all the sacks and that. that might be put, finally put him in the positive in the second half. Clock running, 5-11 to go. It's 29-29. West is going to get it again and he's going to get drilled and stopped immediately. But now Wise is back to getting that, those one or two yards that he was getting good. Wasn't able to get in through right there. Gets just about nothing. And they're not going to give him any gain on the play whatsoever. Second and ten. Well, Glenn's doing a, a couple of things a little bit different by sending the, uh, the back in motion, trying to at least uh, not allow the BC defense to concentrate on what's going on. They give him no gain. I thought he gained a couple of yards, but no, they putting it right at the line of scrimmage. They, so good uh, play by the BC They defense. called his momentum dead. He, he did break away and get a yard or two, but they'd already blown the whistle. Second and 10, give to Wise. He's going to break open, gets about five. As he crosses the 35-yard line, it'll be third down and a long five. Bill, this whole second half, does it not look like he's about uh, just a shoestring away from breaking big yeah. plays? Yeah, he, they've he got, does. They've gotten yeah. a hand on him, and that's it. Mm -hmm. He can't weigh more than a buck and a quarter because one hand is probably. just taking him off. Probably just, time. yeah, probably just tired. Well, that and that's what can show. We're inside four minutes now. Score is tied. Well, your feet may be, your feet start getting a little heavy here late in the fourth quarter. They're gonna give it to him and see if he can pick up the first. He does not. He no, he does. Close. He got a little second effort there, and he may give it to him. They're gonna mark it at the 40, and he may have the first down. We'll have to measure. No, they're gonna go ahead and mark. They're gonna it. Mark, mark it. Okay just across the 40-yard line, which is where he needed to get, and it's another first down well, BC, for the Red Terrors. BC hit him with about a four-yard gain, but he was able to fight forward for the other two yards and give uh, yep. Glenn new life with another set of downs. BC really needs to hold it here. And the give is going to go to Wise. He is going to bounce off of a tackler and gets uh, about three or four more as he gets over near the 45-yard line, just shy of the 45. It'll be second down and about six. Well, B BC really needs to go back to disguising their defense a little bit and get Roosevelt Pugh back in there to play linebacker. Matt Tuttle did a great job right there of taking on a couple of blockers and causing a pile right there, but uh, BC's just outnumbered. They got four defensive linemen and one linebacker on five uh, linemen and a tight end, so they outnumbered six to five right there, and it, it's showing. Fumble! <laughs> But it looked like Franco Johnson fell on the ball. He did. Roosevelt Pugh was there to make sure, though, if it had come out. So that'll bring up third down and about nine. Is the ball resting now on the 41-yard line. Well, now we're going to see if Franco uh, Johnson's got that passing form that he had in the first half. He has not. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here. They have not completed a pass in the second half, would you say? I don't think so. And uh, that I can remember. I can't remember one either. After, I don't think, missing a pass in the first yeah, half. Yeah, really. Two All minutes and 17 seconds. Watch for a screen. 29, 29. Johnson to pass. It's incomplete. Bounced off Ziegler's hands. Well, it was intended Ziegler, out there. Uh, Ziegler needs to get something on it. He went right through his hands, and then it hit. Uh, Bud Bennett. Bud Bennett right in the uh, in the right in the numbers and came up in the air and uh, one of the Glenn, uh, receivers caught the ball way out of bounds so it brings up a fourth down for them they're going to have to punt the ball away with BC only a couple minutes to try to keep this game from going to overtime 
And of course, the Georgia highly screwed up association has one of the worst <laughs> overtimes you've ever heard in your life. Makes no sense whatsoever. Well, we were talking about it. Uh, ooh. Boy, he took his time getting that one off. Yes, a boy, he, he got off a boomer. And Siegler's not going to touch it. Just let it go. And it takes a nice Glenn roll down to about the 16-yard line. Well, Bill, I can tell you right now, we probably need to start talking about overtime because at this point in the field with minute and 55, Coach Tommy Brackett is not going to do anything to put his uh, team in jeopardy uh, of losing, I think, in regulation. Yes, Georgia High School Association plays two five-minute halves. The much. key word there is halves. It yeah. Is, it is two. It is a mini game, kind yeah. of like a mini me. It is two halves mm -hmm. uh, of football. They scored. sat there. They sat up long and hard thinking up that one with the infield fly rule and yeah. everything else. Well, contrary, they're going to come out in the. Uh, in the passive formation, give Dotson a chance maybe to do something here. And he's back to pass. He floats it right up to Kenny, and it's intercepted. Intended out there for Kenny O'Neill, and they went to the well one time too many, and Travis Drayton went high and intercepted it. Well, that's exactly what I said right there. I really didn't expect, uh, you know, Glenn Academy, the one weapon they do have that we haven't seen is over the past four or five years, they have an excellent field goal kicker. And they only need about 15 yards to be in his range. Uh, and they're going to spread the field here and see if BC can cover. And Glenn takes it with a minute 49 to go. Let's see what happens. Johnson looking to pass. Fire is going to be complete. To Drayton down on his knees. So that's not Drayton. That is number nine. Uh, Jarmaine, we don't have him. Jarmaine Johnson. Jarmaine Johnson. Jarmaine Johnson. He's uh, actually labeled as uh, the freshman. <laughs> They've just got freshmen in the program. Well, the clock continues to run. Second down and about two. And Glenn's going to be penalized probably five yards for illegal procedure. No, it's against BC. Is it? Yeah, he came across the line and hit him right there. Oh. I saw all I saw was number 50 yeah. stand up for the Red Terrors. Grover Collins got a little excited right there, and what that's doing, that's just by me. my by my recollection, that puts them in field goal range right now. So Glenn gets the automatic first down with the five-yard penalty because they only had second down and two. 29-29. Franco Johnson looking to pass. Now he's going to run. He's got room down the sidelines, and he's knocked out of bounds after a gain of about six inside the 20. BC's got a hurt player down. I believe that's going to be Grover Collins. Yep, sure is. Sophomore defensive lineman who's been filling in for Michael Porter. Getting up slowly and, and going to be limping like off cramp. the field. That's just what they need, another injury. They, uh, probably yeah. the, the, the the group that's got the biggest work is the St. Joseph's Candler Sports Medicine group tonight. They've gotten their, uh, <laughs> they've had their work cut out for them right now. Looking on the sideline right now, see sitting over there rooting for Hepsi. Played such a superb second half. 109 to go. 29-29. A sensational comeback for the cadets, but was it for naught? Fires complete. We have a to the 10 yard line. We do have a penalty flag down over here on this sideline. I'm not sure what that is unless it's offsides on BC or maybe some sort of illegal formation. Let's see what we've got. Blake Ferguson with the catch. The referees Watch out discussing it. Illegal procedure. procedure. Boy, that came at an opportune time for the cadets. Well, I was looking out here and it looked like they had too many people off of the line of scrimmage and had with, it, with an illegal formation. They didn't have uh, didn't enough have six people men on the line. Didn't have six people on the line. A little confusion on the uh, formation. Franco Johnson questioning the call, the quarterback for Glenn. Uh, that's one of those ones you might could consider a little bit of uh, mama's cooking. But anyway, I, I was looking out here and I agree with the call from John Crosby, the line judge out here. There you see, we're inside a minute. We're inside a minute, taking down to 46 seconds and counting. 
Back to pass. Johnson fires over the middle complete and hit and dropped immediately as Travis Drayton bringing up third down and about five. Glenn's going to have to take a timeout, try to stop it. They were caught in bounds. And it's third down and four with 34 seconds right here. I look for him right here to run the ball to the middle of the field and try to get themselves into good field position for a uh, game winning field goal. It's third and five. Don't try for the first down right here. Not with the kind of kickers. I saw him beforehand. I've got my van parked a little bit in the uh, goal post there. And I tell you what, he was out around the 40 and he was nailing the back of my van then. So um, I look for him to maybe run some sort of unbalanced here and try to get the ball at least to the middle an off tackle or something run wise to the left. And that's Brian wise It's not saying yes. that it is wise yeah. to run to the left as it could have been mistaken. You didn't mistake that. I, I, I didn't, but it, you, it may be wise to give it to Wise. He's there you go. certainly broken some. Uh, I think Glenn Academy does have one more timeout, but even as such, they would have, uh, I would think they would have enough time to run the uh, clock out there. And if I'm BC, I'm probably calling timeout here anyway. I wouldn't let them just run out and kick it with the uh, time running out. But they're going to line up in a. BC fans on their feet. The 15 people that came up from Brunswick are also on their feet. Franco Johnson looking to pass. Gets clobbered back there at the 20-yard line. Well, I tell you what, Bill, if he makes this field goal by two yards, that's going to be a BC needs to call timeout. Save the clock. Fourth down and five. And finally a whistle. Clock no, conti nope. Clock continuing to run. 12 seconds, 10. They're just going to let it run out, Tom. Glenn's going to let it run down, and uh, then Glenn's going to call timeout here. All right. And they're going to. That's exactly what they've done. They've called timeout with four seconds to go, and the field goal team coming on. Well, what you're going to see here is the old ice trick. I'm sure that uh, Glenn will go out and line up. BC will call timeout, give him some time to think about it. This is the exact same situation they were in a year ago. But BC blocked this kick to hold on to a victory. They were up, I, I want to say, by just one or two points, or maybe they were up by three, and this would have tied it. But uh, my memory doesn't. Uh, I'm trying to check some writing it says, history. It says something on the. I know the they blocked. Notes. They blocked two field goals to keep it, but I'm not sure what the score was last year. The last one they blocked was only within a couple of seconds. Joey well, Bullen. It's all riding right here. We're either going to OT or going home. Joey Bullen will try one from 36 yards. It's up. He drills it. It's off to the left. It had plenty of distance. It's OT. And the clock is registering zero. We go to that stupid mini overtime system. All right. You want me to give the Reader's Digest version here? Yeah. We're going to play two five minutes. They're going to retoss. They're going to go to two five minute overtimes. It, it's not it's not sudden death like in the NFL. No. It doesn't matter who scores. It, they do keep score, but it doesn't matter who scores first or anything like that. They're going to play two five minute overtimes. And at the end a of lot that of time. Sense to me. At the end of those two five-minute halves, and they are halves, they're not quarters. Yeah. Difference meaning that at the end of the first five minutes, it's like at the end of the half, and therefore uh, each team, what that guarantees, Bill, is that each team will have at least one possession um, well, for whatever that's pleased. worth because somebody will get it to start the first half and somebody will get it to start the second half. There's really no, uh, it's pretty much like a mini game. If you yeah. win the toss here, you'll defer to the second half. Just like you did. What they, the hardest part here is that two administrators have got to come out and meet because they have to go on the sidelines to uh, mark. If the score is tied at the end of both halves, uh -huh. and that's what you're seeing. <laughs> I think Coach Brackett just said the same thing. I'm watching his uh -huh. lips. If the score is tied at the end of the two halves, we have to get out the slide rules. You will see them marking on the sidelines. So the pocket uh, calculators. They will be marking on the sidelines. They should have two orange cones or sideline markers. They will be marking the deepest penetration oh, of please. each offense. And the team with the deepest penetration will be awarded one point. 
And that's and that's the Reader's Digest version, folks. If we tried to explain it to you, I mean, Congress couldn't have come up with something this convoluted. Pretty much. And you see in this the center. This is like the tax code. What you see in the center right now is you see Miss Burke, the uh, principal. And now we've got the minister, the principal for Benedictine. If we can get a shot out on midfield. The principal for Benedictine is talking with, it looks like, the assistant principal from uh, Glen Academy, and they're, o they're going over their procedures. And I'm sure that when Miss Burke got here, she was not thinking she was going to have to go on the field, but she has to go out there. Now, what is they this? don't trust anybody else. The what is this procedure for? We know what the rules are. What the heck do they have to do with the anything? The administrator, administrators have to come out, and they talk about what their role is. And the administrator's role... Their main role is to, is to watch. No, their role is they mark the orange cone. Oh, please. The administrators will hold the cone, <laughs> and they will oh, mark please. the cone. So, uh, Fred, down in the booth, we're going to have to have uh, somebody maybe keep an eye on... Uh, on them marking the cones here, uh, maybe one of our cameras. But you see, uh, Sonny. Were they drunk when they came up with this? <laughs> Good Lord, this is All complicated. Right. Glenn won the toss, well, and they have deferred. Glenn won the toss, they've deferred, so BC will get the ball to start the overtime. You know, the Kansas shootout works so well. You put the ball on the 10 yard line, each team gets a chance to score. Well, they work so well because. It, you know, you can be here for a long time, Georgia. And as we stated several weeks ago, Georgia High School's answer here is that in 10 minutes of play, uh -huh. it's going to be over. Not three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, fooey. I've seen the I've seen the Kansas shootout used on, on numerous occasions yeah. over the last 25 years. The game has rarely lasted more than another three minutes. Bill. Yes. I this have is, seen I have seen some three or four this overtime. Is just yeah, stupid. And you see now they're taking the fit, the uh, two administrators over to the sideline and they're gonna go over them. <laughs> and Coach Brackett right now he's going he's scratching his head going, did I go over? I, with I, I her? don't know what we're on for, but anyway we're we're glad to see it. This is just the we appreciate it. Overtime. Well, Coach Brackett's on the sideline right now and he's scratching his head going, have I gone over with her what <laughs> she's supposed to do? There you yeah. go. So, uh, okay, get us off, okay? <laughs> we got to turn off this light. We can't see the field. There. Thank you. Oh. Uh, yeah, we want it off. <laughs> Here we go. Folks, we're in overtime. This well, is one of those situations. I mean, the, pr the problem that I have with it, and, and I agree with the bill, don't think I'm trying to defend it. The problem I have, you get too many people involved. There's too many things involved with this overtime yeah, that are late. not part of Jeez. the regular game. You know, and this is where we got back. Charlie Smith got mad at me a couple of weeks ago because he thought I uh, was criticizing him of something he did against Effingham, and I was not. It was a great move on his part. He actually let Effingham score because they had over, they had penetrated deeper than he had. And his only way of winning the game was to let Effingham score and to get the ball back and to try to score also, which was a smart move on his part. And, Charlie, if you're watching this replay again later, I commended you then. And, I, again, I apologize if you misunderstood my comments. But uh, here we go with overtime. Two five-minute halves. I'll try to revive Bill here from his, uh, Gee whiz. his letter to Tommy Gillibo on uh, Monday. Is that who's in charge of this wacky organization this is now? It. That's him. He's yeah. the man. Georgia Highly Screwed Up Association strikes again. Okay, Bulletin's uh, kick goes deep into the end zone where it's fielded there by John Ziegler. Brooks Ziegler. Where did I get John Ziegler from? I don't know. Now you're I gonna, have no idea. You're going to look over on the sideline. You'll see the cones. Miss Burke for uh, the cones. <laughs> Benedictine has put her cone down. No cones in football. So Ziegler, or rather Porzio, back to punt. He gets a high floater away. It's going to be taken. It's going to be missed. By That's Travis. the break they needed, That's, folks. And BC, I think, tried to fall on the football. Oh, no, they didn't get it. Uh, sorry, you couldn't see it. Yeah. Came close. BC almost had the break they needed. Thought it was going to be the luck of the Irish. Well, that right there would have been the icing on the cake if you're if you're Glen Academy. They they did botch the uh, they muffed the punt. 
BC had two chances. There were two people down there had a chance to recover. Neither of them got it. Had they got it, it would have put them into excellent field position with a chance to win the uh, win the game. That's that's going to be that right there. Don't look for Glen Academy to get too fancy here on offense. Handoff is going to go to Moody. Moody gets nothing. I'm not sure about the timeout situation. BC, they do carry over, so whatever they had left in regulation do carry over. Here in the booth, he's trying to focus. He's got we got a situation here with the cameras. Hang with us here, folks. I know it's an exciting time to be losing camera. Ball goes to Wise up the middle. He's not able to get, even get back to the line of scrimmage, so they're going to have a third and ten situation. We're trying to get one camera working so far. Feel like so the hiding game to, here, the Super Bowl. We're yeah. <laughs> two minutes. Of course, if they'd have played this game the way they were supposed to, we wouldn't be worried about this. But nevertheless, it's 29 29. There's 228 to go in the second half of the overtime period. Well, what happened right now, Glenn is going to let. Glenn's actually going to take a delay of game. And that's not what they wanted to do. They were going to actually try to call timeout. There was a miscommunication between uh, Coach Tully. He thought he had more time and he was going to call timeout, but <laughs> they let it go to a uh, delay of game, which all that does is is is, is going to make a chance to make the field a little bit shorter here when BC, mm -hmm. if they can, hold them here and force them to punt. Glenn Academy now is going to take that timeout that they wanted to stop the clock with. So it's time out on the field with 2.20 to go in the second half of the overtime period. Thank you. And the score tied 29-29, but Glenn is ahead on penetration. Two seagulls, Gertrude and Heathcliff. I think I'll come up with an overtime rule. Jeez. <laughs> Those characterizations brought to you by the multi-talented Bill Edwards. <laughs> Mercy sakes alive. Well, I'm not sure again of the uh, time situation. I would assume that if BC stops Glenn rather quickly here on a run play, that BC would call timeout to mm -hmm. in order to salvage as much time for their offense as possible. Again, BC's offense will be not necessarily trying to score, but will be somehow trying to reach the 31-yard line mm -hmm. of Glen Academy. So the crowd coming to its collective feet. They don't know what they're cheering about, they but no they just. have no idea why they're cheering. Well, I, I would say there's maybe 10% that know what's going on. The other 90% just said, hey, the guy next to me got up and cheered. I want to do it too. It's third down and about 15. Well, for Glenn's the Red Terrors. Looks like Lynn may do them a favor and throw the ball. They came out in their pa passing formation. Back to pass is Johnson. He's being pursued. He doesn't have to call me Johnson. Yeah. Oh, and he's fumbled the ball. And BC's got it. They got it this Siegler. time. Siegler has it. And they've got to get three yards, Bill. Sorry about that. <laughs> 2.08 to go. And John Ziegler may have just saved it for the cadets. And he's beside himself. Now he's, Matt Tuttle went out and whacked is, him on the helmet and knocked him down. Which is really hard to do. Have you ever tried to get beside yourself? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is d difficult. <laughs> Bill, they, they, they may not understand, but all they know is BC's got the ball. And you're going to see if. Let's take a look at it. Well, don't. All if, right. we do it, let's, if we can do it very here we quickly. We're going to see him come out right here. And I'm even more miffed than I was before, Bill. Here you, go. you can't really see it because no. he's going to get down. Okay, bring it back. Bring it back live. I hope they're going to hand this ball off. No, Dotson's going to pass. Fires it over the middle, and it's complete. Never he's mind what go I said. For the touchdown. Don't do that. Don't do that. Kenny O'Neill. Don't do that. 
Now that's the ironic thing about this this double overtime system. A lot of the BC fans, I bet you a lot of people think they've won the game. They exactly. haven't. Well, There's still two minutes to play. If Glenn scores, BC will lose, even if it's a tie game because of penetration. <laughs> and, yeah, and there's probably people who are wondering what I'm talking about when they see this replay. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, I'm very happy, and, and it may work out just fine. So what we're saying may be all for naught, but Glenn will get a chance. Porzio will put it through. It's up, and it is good. It's 35, 36. At the score to win, but the thing is, if they score and kick an extra point, they win the game yeah. in penetration over in, by penetration. And there may be a lot of people here that when they see this replay will be the first time they realize that. And again, we're not belittling the people who are here and their knowledge. No. It's just not very conventional. And like I said, I. Not very conventional. Uh, well. Designed by a bunch of guys that didn't have the IQ of a philodendron. All we're saying is they didn't have to do that. They yeah. could have quarterback sneaked it yeah. and gotten four yards and run a lot of time off and won the game 30 to 29. Mm. And I'm sure Coach Brackett's well aware of it, and I commend them. But now they really they put a lot of pressure. They just give them credit. They put a lot of pressure on Glenn. Glenn is going to have yeah. to go down and score. But we saw, I think, about a 40-second drive a uh, couple of minute drive in the first half so there's no reason to think that Glenn can't do it they will be going into the win and we, I'm liable to get a bunch of phone calls Monday of uh, people but so be it I'm probably gonna get a call from the Georgia High School Association if they know how to use a telephone line drive kick that's fumbled picked up and He's still going. That's number 13, Troy Flo Tony Floyd. Well, Franco Johnson and the Glenn offense have got a score right now and kick an extra point. If they do, they'll win the games. They're up on penetration. And That's in their pocket. BC man is hurt. Nardis Walker. That's not good. He's one of the top defensive backs for BC. And they're going to need him right here in the very next, very near future. Now, see, this is this is another thing about the uh, about the overtime. You've played all this extra time. These kids are tired, and there's a bigger chance of injury, and Nardis Walker is a classic example. Yeah, hopefully it's just a cramp or now, something. If you, just, if you do the Kansas shootout, this thing would have been over a half an hour ago. But you endanger these kids. I mean, the only way this makes sense is that the Georgia High School Association wants to kill our kids. It's, a, it's 11 o'clock. We've been out here a while, and he is a little cramped up. Uh-huh. All right, you're going to see uh, the, if if there's any more high potency left in this Glenn offense, they're going to need it right here. Get uh, upfield and get out of bounds and stop the clock. I'm not sure about the timeout situation. 153 to go. Now you see the clock and the score. Back to pass. Johnson. Johnson looking. You fires it downfield. And it's, did he catch it or did he trap it? Very they complete. said he trapped it. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. It was intended for Travis Drayton. I think if Johnson could have uh, planted his foot right there and gotten a little bit more on it, they would have had a big gainer. Or Jermaine Johnson. We guess it's Jermaine Johnson. He's after number eight in the program, except it just says freshman. He doesn't have to call me Johnson. Ah, uh, he doesn't have to. I haven't seen Raymond J. Johnson in years. What the heck happened to him? With a group, a uh, comedy group called the Ace Trucking Company years ago. He doesn't have to. Johnson firing it down once again. This one is complete. He's hit, and they're going to probably call it incomplete. That's a good call. Yeah, it is. He, he held it for it a second. Enough. Travis Drayton got clobbered immediately on a great defensive play. And Brooke, Brooke Ziegler looks up in the stands and just says, yeah. 137 I to go. I tell you what, Bill, if, if BC holds on, I would have to say your uh, co-players of the week in the Coastal Empire are Kenny O'Neill and Matthew, Matthew Dodson. Dodson. What a great effort. BC smartly putting Fires some pressure over on. Over the head of Brett Blake Ferguson. 
Boy, this is one of those games Glen Academy is just going to go home and kick themselves. 92 I, seconds to go. They left something in the locker room at halftime. Boy, they did. But that's the great thing about high school football. Well, we thought the Camden County ending was really something. This is unbelievable. Fourth down. Johnson back to pass being pursued he's gonna run he's got plenty of room right. but he's nah, he, he made got it. it they were back in the prevent defense and all that does is prevent you from winning well they got to reset the chains Glenn will get so Glenn gets another shot at it, and they still got 80 seconds on the clock. Johnson's tired. I tell you what, that run took a lot out of him. I give the kid credit. Johnson looking to pass again, fires, and it's over the head of number nine on Jermaine Johnson. And we take another look at uh, Johnson's run. In a dream sequence there. Yes. <laughs> Johnson looking. Looking comes through right here. He's made right now. He's made the decision to run the ball. Yeah, he's got to get 10 yards. And from that point, he's got to gain 16. Good little fake right there. Gets up. Who has a shot at Matt Tuttle right there? Changes his direction. Not sure who that was. Had a chance for him. Nice run. Second 10. Back to live action. 108 to go. And Johnson fires. Yeah. Intercepted by Ziegler. That's going to do it. He's back upfield. He's bound to the 40 and just falls down. And Benedictine is going to win this ball game with 59 seconds to go. And Tra Blake Ferguson just threw his helmet down in total disgust. The Red Terrors let this one slip away. Something fierce, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a, let's take a look at it from about the midpoint of the action. Watch Ziegler's interception. Johnson right there lets it go, but it's really here comes it's, Ziegler. it's got nobody know. on on it. What intended? I don't know who he was intending it for. Looked like it was intended for. Uh, By, hard to put uh, on my uh, roster. Mo Moody. Five. Moody, it sure Moody was. was the only one in the frame. BC with Dan right here and Bill. I guess we if we get criticized, it'll be for the fact that we're giving Glenn credit for really, but give BC credit for coming back and finding a way to win. To recap it, Lamar Owen goes down, starting quarterback runs in Matthew Dotson who has really just been used as pretty much a mop up situation he does have a lot of quality experience Cody Thomas starting strong safety and their uh, leading tackler on defense he goes out and you're down by 22 points with a sophomore quarterback who's got a lot of history in his blood and I tell you what he used every ounce of it today boy his my I tell you what brothers and daddies are very proud of, him, of that young man and they should be his dad played at the Citadel then later played baseball and we're not and we're not downplaying but this has really just been a tale of two halves I, I, it really has Glenn and I go back to the comment that Jim Walsh senior told me at halftime that in the in the previous six games they had never seen Glenn execute with the perfection that they did in the first half Glenn came out ready to go but they it was just a, a situation of just too good for their own good you're absolutely right 56 seconds to go and next week we will have uh, the next stumbling block for Benedictine in the uh, their quest for the subregion. They'll take on Bradwell right here at Memorial Stadium again. We'll see Bradwell and it'll be homecoming for Benedictine. And so downing it once more, and, and Glenn's going to call timeout. Now they need one of those plays, uh, where they just sort of run around. Does Glenn have any more timeouts? I don't think so. But it's uh, did they get an extra one? Do they do they get 10 more extra uh, timeouts in the overtime period? Uh, no, just one. OK, but it is added on to how many ever you had in the uh -huh. uh, left over. So it's going to be third down, even though they don't want to move the down marker over there on the sideline. They need just one of those plays where they don't do anything but just hand it back off to each other or something and just run around and run around well, and just run the gonna, time off the clock. What you would probably see here is BC uh, run around a little bit or just down it on third down take a delay a game possibly or run it down as far as they can and then call timeout well delay a game doesn't do you any good right now because the clock stopped 
Well, they're going to run the entire 25 seconds of the next uh, play. Yeah. They'll probably call timeout just before they get the delay. Or you can put them up to the line of scrimmage. Right now you do see uh, the BC defense getting together on the sideline. I think that's probably going to be a combination of the punt team and the, and the defense to talk about what they've got to do. And basically their, their job is to prevent a score. Give up as much yard as you want to, but don't give up a score. Yep. So it's third down and 12. And it's kind of odd to be saying that, but that's the only thing that can beat them is a score because a, a, a touchdown, an extra point, would give Glenn the win by penetration. So now it's fourth down, and the clock is rolling at 42 seconds, 40, 41. And Benedictine will use as much time as they can on this one. They will. They, I think, blew it in, what, at 35? 30 so seconds. Man, you can see it right there on your screen. They're going to let this go down a long, long way, and then they'll call timeout right before they get the delay of game penalty, or they may just go ahead and take a delay of game penalty. But, and they did. So that stops the clock at 14 seconds. They're back a little further. And now they're going. All they have to do is take a snap now. Well, they'll punt it. Although this wouldn't be a bad time to put your, your best guy back there and to uh -huh. fake some sort of punt and run just as wide as he can over here and, and, and run it and run it down. I have done that before, but of course it helped to have your uh, quarterback as the punter. And BC does. And they're short somebody. They've got them running on the field now. Dodson's a good quick kicker. He'll get this ball off. Jeff Diss came on late. Glenn's got to go for the block. They're going to sell out, and he does a great job. It yes, doesn't matter does. where it goes. Just got it off. So Glenn Academy will have eight seconds, and stranger things have happened. To go 72 yards. I've seen it happen. And kick an extra point. Well, I tell you what, with the explosiveness of John Moody and some of those guys in the first half, I don't yeah, know where boy. they went at halftime, but. They must have gotten on the bus. Benedictine is up 36-29. Eight seconds to go. <laughs> A little inside humor for those of yeah, you at home. Our, our director is confused, but no Give more BC confused than the rest of us. I'm telling luck. you. If it was a, yeah. if this is an Irish holiday, they have uh, it, come it back. It will be now. Ian Page needs to back on yeah. up. Leonardis Walker and Brooke Ziegler need to back on up some. They are. They've got to go 73 yards, and he's chunking Long it. Pass. I think we're going to get another pick, and, and we do. Ziegler does it again. It's over, believe it or not. And that does it. What a great win for Coach Tommy Brackett, his 50th win as the head coach, right? Yes, number 50. As the head coach of Benedictine. And this is one that he's going to remember. Boy, and this is one that the Glenn folks are never going to forget. Yeah, this is, i tell you what. The final score, 36 to 29, Benedictine. I'm Bill Edwards, along with Ty Reykjavik. We'll be right back to wrap it up after this. Every night we have to write reports and read all these chapters, and it used to take me forever. Then I couldn't remember what I read to answer the questions, and I hated it. Sometimes homework problems are really reading problems. At Sylvan Learning Center, we use our skills assessment to uncover hidden problems. Then we personalize programs to correct them. Homework doesn't throw me off now. Everything's coming together. Call Sylvan Learning Center in Savannah at 355-2267. If you grow up with violence, it becomes normal to you. These learned violent patterns are then repeated in your own adult relationships. October's Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Safe Shelter wants you to be aware of the perpetual problem of domestic violence. Safe Shelter is open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. If you are a victim of violence or...